Tesla can make their Model Y in 10 hours, that is compared to a Volkswagen that takes, and Ford and GM, closer to 30 hours to roll a car off the assembly line. We've got to put old world thinking behind us. Labor needs to understand this as well. It's all going to be about robotization, higher efficiency, higher gross margins. That's going to be the path to winning. I just hope an American company is the one who can figure it out. Today, we get absolutely spoiled with Steve Wesley coming on the network. Back in 2008, his fund was an early investor in Tesla when Tesla had only 29 employees. He seems to understand Tesla really well and paints the picture for us that Tesla is carrying the US auto manufacturing industry on its back as the global race for EV adoption heats up. Let's watch. The point is, the strike is on until they make a deal. Um, how big of a deal is it and when does it become a big deal? Look, I, I think it's already a, a big deal. And look, we all want to see American workers earn yeah. higher wages. But, but it's coming at a tough time for Ford and GM, and here's why. First, Ford and GM are both struggling to sell just 100,000 units in 2023 20, here. And that's compared to 2 million units for Tesla. So they're supposed to be catching up here. Uh, they're at less than 5%. So if those numbers drop down, that hurts. Second, Tesla's triggering a global price war. And I, I think we've seen it. Tesla's had six cost reductions this year alone. General Motors, Volkswagen, Ford, they're all trying to keep up. But remember the big picture. Not only is Tesla selling a lot more electric vehicles, but they're net margins are 12.9 percent compare that with six percent at gm four percent at volkswagen 2.4 percent at ford yes tesla's margins are so good that they currently have a 6.8 percent market share of all of the free cash flow that is generated by the global auto market this is crazy because in terms of volume tesla's market share is only 1.9 percent so in terms of cash flow Tesla's market share is three times what its volume market share is. And Tesla already has a 21.7% market share on EVs. And if they hit their goal of 20 million vehicles by 2030, they can keep that market share even as the entire world adopts. So if they hit 20 million vehicles and they have a 20% market share in the global auto market, imagine if their free cash flow market share was still three times that 20% market share that they now have. That would be 60% of all cash made globally on automobiles. So you can really see the Apple story that is starting to emerge. And especially with Tesla's grapple on supercharging and the EV infrastructure for charging. And you can also see Tesla's lead in a scalable autonomy solution. It's not hard to imagine Tesla getting a huge portion of the free cash flow market share on a global level. Tesla sees an advantage. They're seizing it. The Chinese, and we'll come to that, BYD are doing the exact same thing, driving costs down. EVs are going to be cheaper than ever before, but it's going to put the squeeze on automakers with high cost structures. So GM and Ford need to be careful. Yeah. This will be an interesting one to watch. Oh, the squeeze has already begun, and it's so difficult for GM and Ford because there's so much resistance internally. The dealerships hate EVs because EVs require less maintenance, and dealerships often rely on maintenance and repairs to make their profits. The Department of Energy lays out why electric vehicles require less maintenance. They say the battery motor and associated electronics require little to no maintenance. There are fewer fluids in an EV. Brake wear is significantly reduced due to regenerative braking. And there are far fewer moving parts relative to a conventional fuel engine. So you can see how these improvements hurt the profits of dealerships. But on top of that, you also have the unions resisting the transition because the transition requires less labor. And so over time, the union will shrink. And so you can see why they don't like the transition either. And now you have Donald Trump this week coming on and saying that he plans to roll back electric vehicles because they're only for rich people and nobody wants them and they're killing US manufacturing. So if Trump gets into power, that's going to hurt GM and Ford's EV ambitions even more. It's not looking good. But if, the, if these automakers are really barely making the line, um, Elon Musk, for example, said they're marching themselves what, straight into bankruptcy if they give in to these higher wage demands and a 32-hour work week. Uh, there's a real disconnect, isn't there? Quickly, because I have so many questions for you. Uh, look, uh, there is. And Elon may be a little crazy, but on that one point, he's probably right. Uh, again, we want to see American workers getting paid more, but in industries that are struggling to be competitive and break even, and, and make no mistake, 
the entire global auto industry is going all electric. It's a race to see who can get quality EVs to the market most quickly at a good price. And here is, as it stands, the global EV race with BYD in number one. But keep in mind at the bottom, it says that this includes electric vehicles and plug-in hybrid vehicles. And half of those vehicles are actually hybrid. I know that because in Q2, BYD released their numbers, 352,000 electric cars and 348,000 plug-in hybrids. So it's about 50-50 split. And that would bring that 1.2 million down to about 600,000, which would actually put Tesla in first if you looked at a graph of just pure electric vehicles. And not only is Tesla number one in terms of volume, but they're also number one in terms of quality. People who own a Tesla are 67% likely to buy another Tesla. This compares to 45% average brand loyalty in other luxury brands. And even beyond luxury, Tesla has the most loyal customers in the entire auto industry. But despite Tesla doing so well, as you can see in the EV race, they are the only American automaker. You have four other Chinese automakers and three German automakers. And if Tesla doesn't get help from other US auto manufacturers, then they're going to be carrying the entire load. And right now the USA imposes a 27% tariff on Chinese car products that come into the USA to be sold. But if it's only Tesla making cars in the USA, we might have to bring that tariff down so that Chinese auto manufacturers are more inclined to get their products into the country because there's not gonna be enough vehicles to go around potentially if it's just Tesla making cars. I'd love to ask you some poignant questions and if you could respond to them because I think that, you know, the first was Tesla, the argument was Tesla makes batteries, Tesla doesn't make batteries. Does Tesla make batteries? Yes or no? Have they made a battery? Look, uh, there's not a black and white question here. What they do is they partner with the CATLs, the Panasonics, uh, and the LG Chems of the world, but in increasingly, They've taken battery production in-house. They have a cost advantage over virtually everybody else except for the Chinese. And that is part of the reason they have such high uh, gross margins, which is great news. Just to make that a little more clear, because he mentioned partnerships with Panasonic and other CATLs, but I just want to make it crystal clear. Tesla designed the 4680 battery cell. They made it. The 4680 is five and a half times larger than the 2170 cell that it replaces. It also stores five times the energy and is supposed to increase the range by 16%. Tesla designed it in order to cut the cost of the battery pack in half relative to the 2170 cell. But the 4680 ramp has been difficult. On May 13th of this year, Troy Teslik wrote that the energy density of 4680 cells ended up being 13% less than the 2170 cells. As a result of this lower energy density, Troy Teslik speculated that the Cybertruck is probably going to need a next-gen 4680, what they call a cyber cell. And Troy was right. On the Q2 earnings call, Drew Beglino announced the cyber cell and it had a 10% higher energy density. So this was going to work in the cyber truck. And now, why did Tesla do this? Well, the cyber cell has a very thick shell because it's five times larger than the 2170s. And that allows them to make a battery pack, a structural battery pack that goes on the bottom of the car. And the reason that that's nice and it reduces the complexity of the manufacturing is because when you have a structural battery pack on the bottom that acts as the structural platform for the whole vehicle, there's nothing else going on. Then you just take the rear and front castings and you put it on top of the structural battery pack. And now you have three modules that make out the car and it reduces complexity, it reduces weight, it lowers costs. This is how Tesla operates and it's amazing. It's like they didn't just design their own battery to store energy better and to increase range. It's also to make manufacturing easier. This is how they keep those margins better than all of their competitors. It's, it's, it's incredible. I'm an American. I wanna see American companies win, whether it's Tesla, GM or Ford. Right now, here are the numbers. Tesla has 21.7% of global EV market share and again, EVs are what matters. Every auto company in the world is going all electric. BYD, a fairly close second at 16.2%. There's a huge drop to the other Chinese companies in Volkswagen. So you've got to get EV production up and going. You've got to do it profitably. And BYD is really right on Tesla's heels. They make a good car, low right. cost, Chinese government subsidizing batteries. That's going to be the real smackdown. But there's a lot of concern about whether people want to drive a Chinese car, not just because they're a competitive country, but because cars are now filled with IoT devices. And do you want a car that could be, or frankly is listening to you, 
I think a lot of people are going to think twice on that one. I'm not so sure. If you look around your house, almost everything is made outside of the U.S. Almost all of it is probably made in China. The American consumer often gravitates towards the cheapest option. And if Chinese car companies are offering that, there's going to be a host of people wanting to buy one. Look at TikTok. That's a social media company based in China, often accused of spying on Americans. And it already has 87 million American users. So I don't think most Americans really care. And if you do care, well, Tesla makes the top four most American made cars. So buy a Tesla. Yeah. And when it comes to valuations, I mean, I know Tesla it has a lofty valuation. I mean, we've had guests on who think it's worth $25, basically, which seems um, significantly an undervalue for a name like Tesla. Um, what kind of stocks do you think can have some upside potential in the world of autos here or abroad? Well, uh, I think there's three to look at right off the bat. First, let's get real on Tesla, the most profitable auto company in the world, growing 40% year over year. They'll be over 100 billion this year. They're trading at a seven or eight X multiple. That's not bad for a company with numbers that look more like a tech company than an auto company. Whoa, did he just call Tesla a tech company? 15 years in the making that's been for someone to come on a media show and call Tesla a tech company? I mean, darn right, it's a tech company. My friend Danielle just bought an acceleration boost on her Tesla with referral credits. You ever heard of an auto company doing that? <laughs> Tesla just made her car faster through an over-the-air update. It's freaking awesome. Um, in the meantime, the UAW strike. Any final thoughts for GM, Ford, and Stellantis? And uh, any big picture trends, whether people are trying to shop for a car or anything you want to add? Well, look, my advice to them is get this settled soon, and you may feel like it's a victory to have uh, higher wages, and I'm all for it, but at some point, you've got to keep an eye on gross margins. And as you said, whether it's cutting uh, senior executive staff or making assembly lines more efficient, that's going to be the key to winning in the future. Today, and here's one last fact for you, Tesla can make their Model Y in 10 hours. That is compared to Volkswagen that takes, and Ford and GM, closer to 30 hours to roll a car off the assembly line. We've got to put old world thinking behind us. Labor needs to understand this as well. It's all going to be about robotization, higher efficiency, higher gross margins. That's going to be the path to winning. I just hope an American company is the one who can figure it out. Yes, I hope that too. And I had a comment last night that stood out to me. It's from a guy who says he worked at a GM factory for over 30 years, and he says, I saw a huge amount of wasted time in the factory. All the UAW skilled workers were guaranteed 20 hours of overtime each week. Most skilled workers would do one job during the extra overtime hours each day, even if the job is only 10 minutes. So after they would just go to some place and hide and relax. The union reps, one rep each, maybe for 20 regular UAW workers, would work on weekends with their overtime and they would just close the door and read newspapers or sleep while getting 2x hourly rate. Much more waste was going on. Some salaried workers were too poor, but waste lots of times for the unions. So this is why GM went bankrupt and to happen again for sure. UAW had 1 million in 1970s and now 140,000 members and to just get smaller. In effect, the UAW leaders are all big GM execs just figure let's just get as much as we can over the next five years before we collapse. And beyond that, we don't care. Just greed. Whether what this guy says is true or not, Tesla is the only hope for US auto manufacturing at this moment. And now the UAW president, Sean Fain, is saying that they are coming after Tesla's workers and they're going to try to convince them to unionize. Tesla has been making cars for 15 years now and somehow Elon has maintained the fast paced startup culture. It's so fast paced that executives at Tesla have an annualized turnover rate of 44%. If unions penetrate Tesla, I'm worried that executives will stay longer, that workers will be more comfortable, and that Tesla will no longer be able to carry US auto manufacturing on its back. But as long as Tesla can continue to invest their cash into valuable projects, and the potential growth of Tesla is probably going to keep workers away from the unions as they will not want to give up those valuable stock options. The only sad part for us retail investors though is that stock options to employees actually dilutes our shares in the company. But I don't care, I'd rather be invested in a fast paced motivated company who have skin in the game than a slow sluggish company that doesn't have any stock in the company they work for. Good day everyone.